if you're looking to put a car lift in your garage, watch this video because today I'm going to be sharing with you my experience with putting this four post lift in my garage and some of the unexpected things both physically and financially that you should be concerned about. In my case, I wanted to go with the best of the best. So I went with Benpack four post lift. I'm going to link down in the description the exact lift that I purchased. Even though I have a three bay garage, in this bay we park our family vehicle, in this bay we park our family things. So I needed a solution that allows me to park my two vehicles and uh, this is what I came up with. There are many things you have to consider before putting a lift in your garage. The first one being your ceiling height. In my case I have a ten and a half foot ceiling which is just over the minimum uh, for this particular list. Now if you go on the company's website again, I'm going to link it down in the description below, you can see exactly the minimum requirements for the lift that you're looking for. Next is the garage door itself, both the track as well as the garage opener because for most garages these will interfere with the car that's being lifted. So for example, if you look at garage door number one, this is the track that it goes on and if you were to open this garage door, it would absolutely interfere with the vehicle. Now imagine this lift being in this place and the garage door being untouched. Basically the garage door would slice through the car which obviously is not possible, as well as this garage opener would prevent us from lifting the car high enough. So, in my case, I had to hire a professional to convert this type of a lift to a side mounted lift. Not only that, he also had to convert the garage door from opening this way to opening higher against the ceiling, in which case, they open like that. As you can see, they were converted to open as high as legally possible against the ceiling, which allows me to fit the vehicle out there without any interference. And in the spirit of full transparency, it cost me $1,200 to convert just the tracks, another $500 for this garage door opener, which I have to highly recommend. It's made by uh, Genie and I have a Genie lift in each one of my bays. They're ultra quiet, they're pretty affordable, extremely reliable, they have battery backups in case your power goes out you can still use the, your garage doors and the app is absolutely fantastic. I was getting a lot of quotes upwards of $2,600 from other companies who were pushing uh, other uh, brands, I'm not going to name them, there are many uh, garage door opening brands, but in my case I wanted to do it separately and it came out a lot, a lot cheaper. And then there's the actual assembly. In my case, I wanted to uh, do a proper video DIYing the install process. However, when I ordered this from the manufacturer, they asked me if I have a forklift handy. I said, no. Uh, why do you say that? Well, the truck that delivers it needs to be offloaded. Uh, so I said, okay, can two people handle it? I have a friend who lives nearby, he can help. Nope, it has to be done by a forklift. And I kid you not, the company was very keen on the fact that I need a forklift to offload this package. So I started researching rental companies that would allow me to uh, rent a portable forklift. The cheapest one I found was $450. I would have it for a week. But then my buddy Caesar told me about this guy who could install this lift for me for 900 bucks. So it was a no-brainer. And when the guy came, he was a terrific installer. He came with a helper. They had no forklift. They offloaded the package, just the two of them. They carried most of the things themselves. The only thing that they had to uh, carry or handle together were these actual uh, platforms. They put them on dollies and they wheeled them into, uh, into their garage. So when the company tells you they need a forklift to offload it from the trailer, I say challenge that and you can save yourself close to $1,000. And then there's one final expense that you have to add to your list and it is the air compressor because most lifts out there operate using air compressors to disengage the brakes. In my case, I went with this ultra quiet air compressor. Initially I went to Home Depot and I got one of the generic ones. It was so loud, it shook the whole house. So then I went on Amazon and I got this ultra quiet one and I'm super, super happy with it. I'm going to link it down in the description for you. While I was there, I also got this tire inflation kit, which I can hook up to my compressor, run the line and inflate all of the tires in my vehicle nice and easy. Okay, enough of this. Let's pull the car out and let me show you how it operates. But before I do so, I wanted to warn you about one thing. 
When you park your car underneath, you will hit your head. I've done this so many times, I ended up installing this protective padding, which I will then extend throughout the bottom of this lift. I'm just gonna get one of those adhesive uh, uh, foam pieces. Also, if you end up parking your car underneath and you want to open up the trunk, you will also hit these rails here with the trunk. So again, here I'm going to be uh, installing a piece of foaming to protect the trunk lid from getting scratched. All right, so now, how do we operate this lift? There are a couple of things you have to consider. You need a power to power the pump. For me, I routed it from the ceiling. You also need the air hose, which is, again, sloppily installed. I have to clean it up. Uh, that powers your uh, air compressor. To lower the car or to lift it, you have this button here. This button raises it, this button uh, lowers it, but if you want to lower the button, you also have to keep pressing this button, which disengages the brakes. Final thing to note is there's no limit on how high you can bring this car. So you've got to set your own limit because if you raise it too high, you might end up crushing your roof. So in my case, in the highest setting, I installed this tape, which does the following. So look, when I lift it up, I know this is the highest setting for me to lift it before I can comfortably engage the brakes. So when you get to that level, you simply lower the brakes, see, and then it rests on the brakes. Now, if you want to lower the vehicle on the lift, you raise it up again to loosen up the brakes and then I'm gonna have to put the camera down, but essentially press this button and lower the lever here, and it's gonna lower the lift. This button disengages the brakes. This lever lowers it, but make sure all the towers disengage, so drop it slowly. And it's as simple as that. It takes about 15 seconds or so. It takes another maybe 30 seconds to lift up the car. You could get a 220 hookup, which uh, provides a stronger motor. In my case, waiting 30 seconds uh, to lift the car up on 110 power is a no-brainer. So this is what it looks like when the car is off the lift. You gain all of this space back. So storage should not be the primary reason why you get this lift. You could technically have one car and just drive onto these ramps every day. You want to park the car, then drive off uh, when you want to use the car and use it only when you do work on the vehicle. So this was my experience with this lift. Looking back, I have zero regrets with spending the amount of money I spent not only on the lift, but also on all the prep work because it gives me storage abilities and it also gives me the ability to work on my vehicle underneath and it just makes things a lot easier. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll try to address every single uh, one of them, uh, but I'm curious to hear uh, what you have to say about uh, a lift solution like that. Uh, does it make sense? Does it not make sense? Uh, so yeah, leave your comments down below, and uh, thank you very much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Okay, so I was a bit off, a minute, 18 seconds. Still not too bad. If you're someone who's looking to put a, if you're someone, if you're someone who's looking to put a car,